We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Poland. Welcome to Katowice. This is the opening ceremony of 16th annual UN Internet Governance Forum, an international meeting held at the initiative of the United Nations, enabling a global discussion on the development of the Internet. My name is Agata Konarska. I'm a TV journalist, and believe me, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all, dear participants, at this most important and international event of the year. I warmly welcome all those gathered here in this hospitable interiors of the International Conference Center in Katowice. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me welcome United Nations Under Secretary General, Mr. Liu Zhen Min. Please take your seat, please take your seat. Just a welcome. <laughs> Prime Minister of Poland, Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki. <laughs> During opening ceremony, we will also get to hear from United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, and the President of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Andrzej Duda. We also welcome all participants who are online with us. After all, ladies and gentlemen, it is an event about the digital world. The headline of uh, this year's UN Internet Governance Forum is United Internet, which means an accessible, united, friendly internet for all. The internet connecting all its users into one community responsible for its shape and functioning. During the COVID-19 crisis, the internet proved to be enormously helpful in organizing our lives to an extent that we could have never foreseen just a few months ago. This has only confirmed how precious and valuable a part of our lives it actually is. We are simply, ladies and gentlemen, living in a digital world, and it is a fact. For the first time in history, Poland is hosting the global edition of the Internet Governance Forum, organized here in Katowice, the International Congress Center. And we Poles are very honored to host such an important event. And we consider it as an appreciation of our efforts and activities in the field of digitalization. We hope and we believe that the forum will be a place of open and real debate about the future of internet because everyone can influence this debate and express their opinion. During the five days of this year's edition, of the forum, there will be 300 events, activities, and initiatives, such as lectures, debates, and workshops devoted to the digital world, from legislation through currently available technologies to future technologies such as quantum technologies. Experts from all over the world, ministers of digitalization, entrepreneurs, and representatives of the world of science are taking part in the IGF 2021. They will also discuss more general horizontal issues, such as those related to the access to the Internet. Because we have to remember that at the moment, half of the world still does not have such an access. During the IGF 2021, important decisions about the future of the Internet will be made of editing all web users. And there are more and more of them in just two years from 2000. 19, 782 million new users have used the internet. That's more than twice the population of the United States. The global pandemic has definitely accelerated the process of digitalization of individual areas of economic, political, and social life. Of course, it still requires areas of economic, political, and social life. Of course, it still requires appropriate funding and the involvement of the younger generation. The organizers of IGF 2021 are aware that 
young internet users play a key role in the development of the internet. After all, the future belongs to them. Therefore, an important part of this year's Internet Governance Forum is the Youth IGF Summit. This year's edition of IGF is being held in a hybrid formula, so anyone interested can in person in Katowice or join us online. It's worth, ladies and gentlemen, being with us. And it's time now to officially begin. The first speaker will be Mr. Liu Zhenmin, United Nations Undersecretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, who are now invited to the stage with very big pleasure. Mr. Zhenmin will take the floor, give us a short introduction before the Secretary General's speech. Please, come on stage. Your Excellency, Mr. Duda, President Poland. Your Excellency, Mr. Morawiecki, Prime Minister Poland. Your Excellency, Mr. Krupa, Mayor for Kordovitz. Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, I warmly welcome you all to the official opening of the 16th Internet Governance Forum convened in Katowice. Due to the scheduling conflict, Secretary General Guterres is not able to join us today in person, but we have the honor to hear his address delivered from the UN headquarters in New York. Now, please play the video of Secretary General Antonio Guterres' remarks. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the life-changing power of the internet. Digital technology has saved lives by enabling millions of people to work, study, and socialize safely online. But the pandemic has also magnified the digital divide and the dark side of technology, the lightning fast spread of misinformation, the manipulation of people's behavior, and more. We can only address these challenges united through strengthened cooperation by establishing clear rules to safeguard human rights and fundamental freedoms, by regaining control over our data, by countering disinformation and hate speech, and by connecting everyone to the Internet by 2030. The Internet Governance Forum has a crucial role in shaping the conversation. The vision of an open, free and secure digital future underpins my roadmap for digital cooperation. And my recent report on our common agenda proposes a global digital compact aimed at bringing governments, the private sector and civil society together in support of this vision. I hope this forum will create momentum and spur progress. I urge you to be bold and I wish you successful deliberations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Dear participants, I join Secretary General Antonio Guterres in extending our heartfelt thanks to our host, the government of the Republic of Poland. I thank uh, President uh, Duda for his previous pre pre speeches going to be delivered. I also thank Prime Minister Morawiecki for his personal participation here today at this opening. The 16th IGFC Internet United is timelier than ever as we continue to witness how the COVID-19 pandemic disrupts our lives of human beings. The pandemic has impacted how we live, how we work, and how we interact with each other, and how those unconnected are left further behind. The IGF could deliver its promise for shaping a digital future for the world, turning the COVID-19 crisis into opportunities. Indeed, this is easier said than done, as the global internet governance is complex. But united, we can succeed together. So distinguished participants, joining us at this hybrid meeting Outside, on site and online, as of last night, there are over 
8,000 registered participants representing governments, international and intergovernment inter organizations, civil societies, academia, technical communities, and businesses. All the participants engaged in over 200 different sessions focused on the forum's main areas. From access and attractivity to social economic development, human tr rights, trust and cooperation, to environment and emerging regulations. I believe there will be insightful exchanges highlighting the promises and the perils of the digital space, showcasing solutions and approaches and inspiring ways forward to our digital future. And the way forward should reach those who can make a concrete impact. The United Nations remains fully committed to working for a better internet for all through a strong IGF process. I look forward to being part of many important exchanges at the court of East IGF. I wish this 16th Internet Commons Forum in Katowice a great success. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Liu Zenmin, Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs. Thank you for your speech and thank you for being in person with us in Katowice. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to give the floor to the President of Poland. Mr. Andrzej Duda will now deliver his opening remarks in the form of video message. Distinguished, distinguished guests, dear attendees of the 16th UN Internet Governance Forum, it's my great pleasure and true honor to welcome you to IGF 2021 in a beautiful and vibrant Polish city of Katowice. Regretfully, I'm unable to join you personally today. However, it's with great satisfaction that I can greet you, the most reputable internet community, send you my best wishes and to address you by means of this video. Your numerous presence here on the site in Katowice, but also online due to the current pandemic situation, only shows the significance of the digital space in present days and how important its issues are for us all. Let's be honest. If there was no internet, we would not be able to meet in such a big numbers these days. It's true that we all live in a digital world. Yet we also live in a time of great challenges which affects this digital dimension of human activity. Therefore, we all seek an environment which can be secure, neutral and trusted. It's only up to us, the global community, how we design it and how we organize it. Digital transformation is simply a must for our global well-being. But we still need to answer some crucial questions, such as how does digitalization change our lives? How can we fully benefit from it globally? What is our vision for future education? Can we fully trust the emerging technologies? And how can we harvest its benefits? Or how do we preserve human rights in a digital space? These questions need to be answered in a collective manner, not just by a country, by a region, or by a group of stakeholders. What we really need is a joint concert effort, otherwise it will simply not work. Dear participants, I'm truly delighted that today Poland is at the heart of the debate on these vital problems. Some of you have made a long journey to come here, to Central Europe, a region of unique energy, home to ambitious nations, as well as hardworking, talented and creative individuals. I have no doubt you will appreciate the character of this amazing region extending from the Baltic in the north 
to the Black and Adriatic Seas in the South. I'm especially happy to see such a great response from younger generations of Internet users. Your voice is so important in the process to be discussed in Katowice over the next seven days. The future is yours, and so is this debate. Talking about future, I simply cannot miss this opportunity to mention that this year we celebrate the 100th birthday anniversary of Stanisław Lem, a visionary writer and futurologist. Lem once said, we don't want to conquer the cosmos. We simply want to extend the boundaries of Earth to the frontiers of the cosmos. But does the Internet really have no boundaries? And if so, can we extend them beyond the boundaries of our habits? Is the global network the final frontier? I'm sure those questions will be an inherent part of your dialogue, especially that the main theme of this year's UNIGF in Poland is Internet United, Free, Open and Indivisible. I wish you undisturbed intellectual work, fruitful and passionate discussions as well as brave conclusions. May your debate result in making the Internet a valuable and enriching space as well as secure, inclusive and trusted dimension of human activity. Good luck. It was the President of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Andrzej Duda. Ladies and gentlemen, today the Prime Minister of Poland, Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki, is with us in Katowice and will take the floor now. Please. Panie i Panowie, drogi Panie Zastępco Sekretarza Generalnego do spraw zarządzania globalnym internetem, wszyscy szanowni ministrowie, parlamentarzyści, drodzy goście. Od dawna świat wirtualny i świat realny zaczęły się splatać ze sobą najpierw w literaturze, najpierw w science fiction, potem coraz bardziej w życiu realnym, aż wreszcie dzisiaj obserwujemy połączenie tych dwóch światów w ramach naszego życia codziennego, w ramach spraw związanych z gospodarką, z życiem gospodarczym, mediami społecznościowymi czy administracją publiczną, samorządową i po prostu kontaktami międzyludzkimi. Stajemy się zatem dzisiaj członkami jednej wielkiej globalnej społeczności internetowej, która może być przyczyną znakomitego rozwoju w przyszłości, a jednocześnie może stanowić pewnego rodzaju pułapkę i zagrożenie. Trochę jak znany od dawna nóż, którym można kroić chleb, a jednocześnie można uczynić krzywdę. Internet jest właśnie takim narzędziem, tylko o wiele, wiele bardziej wpływającym na życie wszystkich ludzi, jednocześnie na całym świecie. Internet jest wspaniałą obietnicą dotyczącą życia w przyszłości, życia ludzi ze sobą połączonych coraz lepszą siecią, coraz bardziej wydajną siecią. I jednocześnie doświadczamy tego w wielu dziedzinach naszego życia, jak chociażby w służbie zdrowia. Spotykając się dzisiaj tutaj z Państwem rok po zaplanowanej wcześniej dacie, rok po odwołanym wcześniej forum, wiemy doskonale, jak wielką siłę ma pandemia. Ale to jednocześnie wdrożone 
rozwiązania internetowe, elektroniczna recepta, elektroniczne skierowanie, elektroniczne zwolnienia uratowały wiele istnień ludzkich, choćby w Polsce, gdzie na czas te rozwiązania wdrożyliśmy. To są te dobre strony internetu, ale jednocześnie doświadczamy bardzo wielu ataków hakerskich, coraz większych ataków ze strony różnych państw, gdzie internet jest używany jako broń. I dlatego mało jest ważniejszych spraw, jak ta, aby dzisiaj na forum Narodów Zjednoczonych, Organizacji Narodów Zjednoczonych wypracować wspólne rozwiązania w zakresie zarządzania internetem. Jeśli nie płacisz za produkt, to produktem jesteś ty. Myślę, że ta fraza dobrze oddaje kondycję jednostki w dobie mediów społecznościowych, w dobie internetu. Jeśli nie płacisz za produkt, to produktem jesteś ty. Musimy zdać sobie sprawę z tego, jak wielką bronią jest internet i jak konieczne jest dzisiaj wypracowanie pod kierunkiem narodów zjednoczonych, specjalnie do tego powołanych organizacji i jednostek odpowiednich zarządzeń i odpowiedniego systemu zarządczego. I to jest wyzwanie na miarę XXI wieku. Wyzwanie, któremu możemy sprostać tylko wspólnie. Tak jak kiedy 100 lat temu pojawiły się pierwsze monopole, już z okładem 100 lat, i państwa narodowe poradziły sobie z tym, przynajmniej w dużym stopniu, poprzez powołanie odpowiednich instytucji antymonopolowych. Tak dziś stoimy u progu wyzwań globalnych. Poradzić sobie musimy z monopolami globalnymi, a w odniesieniu do dyskusji o internecie musimy wypracować globalne rozwiązania w temacie internetu. To jedno z największych wyzwań ludzkości. To jedno z największych wyzwań stojących przed Organizacją Narodów Zjednoczonych. Ale tak jak została ona powołana w, po II wojnie światowej, aby uczynić świat lepszym, aby dbać o pokój, o stabilność, o rozwój w XX wieku, tak sądzę, że dziś również Organizacja Narodów Zjednoczonych podoła tym wyzwaniom XXI wieku. A jednym z nich, jednym z tych największych wyzwań jest właśnie wypracowanie najlepszych praktyk, modelu i obowiązków dla wszystkich państw na świecie w zarządzaniu tym wspaniałym narzędziem, które rodzi jednak dla ludzi wiele ryzyk, tworzy wiele nowych ryzyk. Jestem jednak przekonany, że ta konferencja tutaj w Katowicach, w Polsce, przyczyni się do wypracowania nowych rozwiązań, a jednocześnie przyczyni się do wdrożenia tych rozwiązań we wszystkich państwach całego świata. Dziękuję bardzo organizatorom, dziękuję panu zastępcy sekretarza generalnego, który jest tutaj dzisiaj z nami, i wszystkim Państwu uczestnikom życzę owocnych obrad i życzę wypracowania jak najwięcej konkretnych rozwiązań dla dobra całej ludzkości. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much. The Prime Minister of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki, thank you for your speech. And in this moment, ladies and gentlemen, I have to emphasize that uh, the Chancellor of the Prime Minister is the co-organizer of the IGF 2021. Thank you very much. And as we are in Katowice, let's give the floor to the mayor of the city, Mr. Marcin Krupa, who will deliver his opening remarks. You are now invited to listen and to watch his speech. Szanowni Państwo, drodzy goście, kilkanaście lat temu nasze miasto postawiło pierwszy krok w kierunku swojej przemiany. Skupiliśmy wówczas uwagę na innowacyjności i kreatywności, również, a może i przede wszystkim swoich mieszkańców, bez których ta transformacja nie mogłaby się dokonać.
Był to impuls, dzięki któremu Katowice stały się jednocześnie ośrodkiem nowoczesnych technologii, miastem wielkich wydarzeń i centrum spotkań biznesowych. Międzynarodowe Centrum Kongresowe, w którym Państwa gościmy, jest jednym z najlepszych efektów tej przemiany. Mam wielki zaszczyt przywitać Państwa na Światowym Forum Zarządzania Internetem. Polska po raz pierwszy jest gospodarzem tego prestiżowego wydarzenia. Jestem ogromnie dumny, że to kolejne wydarzenie pod egidą ONZ w Katowicach. Zaczęło się bowiem w 2018 roku szczytem klimatycznym COP24. Teraz spotykamy się na IGF, a już w przyszłym roku będziemy gościć uczestników Światowego Forum Miejskiego WUF11. To pokazuje, jak ważnym ośrodkiem na mapie świata stały się Katowice. Nie pozostaje mi nic innego, jak serdecznie Państwa zaprosić do wspólnej dyskusji na temat przyszłości internetu. Niech to spotkanie będzie owocnym miejscem wymiany myśli i doświadczeń w zakresie zarządzania internetem. Witam Państwa w Katowicach. Mr. Marcin Krupa, City Mayor of Katowice, Katowice, a town who became a center of a global debate about the development of the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the opening statements from representatives of stakeholder groups. I know that Doreen Bogdan Martin, Director of the Telecommunication Development Bureau ITU, is with us online. Good morning, hello, greetings from Katowice. You are now invited to take the floor. Thank you so much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to join you for the opening of this 2021 edition of the IGF, representing ITU Secretary General Hu Lin Zhao, who was not able to be with us today. This year's meeting in Katowice has a particularly special meaning for me because of my Polish heritage. It's also special for all of us at ITU because this year marks the 100th anniversary of Poland's ITU membership. Let me take a moment to thank the government of Poland for its many valuable contributions to our work over so many years and for its continued active engagement in our mission to connect the world. This year's IGF challenges all of us to think about the internet as one community. Internet United is much more than just a theme. It's an urgent call to action to bring meaningful connectivity to all. Our new data released by ITU last week show that internet uptake dramatically accelerated during the pandemic. We had what we call a COVID boost with almost 800 million users coming online since 2019. That's encouraging news, but it's still very far from good enough because our figures also indicate that 2.9 billion people or 37% of the world's population remain totally shut out of the online world. With December passing quickly, we're nearing the dawn of a new year. Okay, right. I believe song. that year may be the most critical in generations in terms of our efforts to bridge the digital divide. In January, the UN community will come together in Doha, Qatar for the LDC5 conference. And in a few short months that follow, ITU will hold its World Telecommunication Standardization Assembly, its World Telecommunications Development Conference, and its 2022 Plenipotentiary Conference. For the ITU, the lessons of the pandemic present us with an unmissable opportunity an opportunity to push connectivity to the very top of the global development agenda and to leverage a holistic approach to collaboration to shape a new world where a fast, safe, and affordable internet 
connection is not a given, is a given, pardon me, it's not a privilege. So where a fast, safe, and affordable internet connection is a given. Ladies and gentlemen, ITU has been a staunch supporter of the IGF since its inception at the World Summit on the Information Society, for which we served, of course, as a lead agency. As we look ahead to the shape of a future IGF Plus, as foreseen in the UN Secretary General's high-level panel report on digital cooperation, ITU will work hard to further strengthen this partnership to drive broader participation and accelerate progress towards the sustainable development goals. I hope many of you will join us for our forthcoming World Telecommunication ICT Policy Forum, where we will meet to discuss how to better harness emerging technologies to drive sustainable development. I wish you a very successful IGF 2021, and I look forward to working alongside you to build an equitable, sustainable, and inclusive digital future for all. Thank you very much. Doreen Bogdan Martin, thank you very much for your opening statement. Mr. Ralph Mupita, President and CEO of the MTN Group, is with us online also. Hello, good morning. Greetings from Katowice. Do you hear us? Great to see you. Good morning, I can hear you loud and clear. The floor is yours then. No, thank you so much and uh, a very good uh, afternoon, morning and uh, evening, depending on your timeline. Um, I am dialing in from Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, and just to wish all the attendees to uh, this uh, very auspicious forum um, and uh, the matters that are being discussed within the context uh, of internet and internet freedoms. Um, maybe just to start with some perspective of uh, MTN Group and uh, the role that we've seen uh, ourselves and other operators playing to enable more and more people to connect to the internet and remain digitally included. You know, we serve uh, close on to uh, 270 million subscribers across 20 markets, largely on the African continent. Uh, but we also serve uh, markets in the Middle East. In Africa, we are serving uh, about 17 African countries where we have operations there, generally number one or number two across these markets in uh, the size and scale of our business and uh, the customers that we cover. And uh, in terms of uh, internet connectivity to these customers, you know, over time. And I think for many, it will be um, interesting to uh, remind them that uh, um, there are many uh, markets where people are still not um, enjoying the benefits of the internet and uh, what it can do to transform societies. Um, and we have uh, actually, you know, smartphone penetration as a proxy for internet connectivity at best about 40%. So, 60% of uh, those subscribers that we're dealing with actually are not enjoying the, the benefits of the internet. But what we've seen in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, as uh, the pandemic um, um, you know, started to transform lives and livelihoods from March last year, has been uh, a clear divide about those who have and those who don't have. Those who have and don't have access to the internet. We saw um, in March last year into the, the first couple of waves across markets that for those who had access to the internet, they were able to carry on. Uh, they were able to continue their normal economic activities um, and more broader social activities. We saw uh, kids were able to go to school online for those who were privileged, but for those who weren't privileged to have access to the internet and the tools that are needed for continuing education, you know, they were stranded. And in some of our countries, um, children have this, the countries we operate in, some, some children have not gone to school since March last year. So you, we're having a generation of children who would have been left behind at best, but obviously, or at worst, um, you know, their education has been completely disrupted. Um, and there were other evidence and uh, examples of this impact of showing the very stark divide between those who have and, and, and those who don't have. We've seen a significant surge um, in, for those who have in terms of data usage um, across, and in some markets, you know, our data traffic is uh, about 170% up from the same period 
um, you know, two years ago, which shows that um, there's a lot more um, interaction and engagement uh, in the internet across uh, pretty much the, the markets that we operate in, as I said, predominantly in Africa. We've taken a view as a company that one of the things that we need to build as a core to our strategy has to be around accelerating uh, broadband coverage um, you know, over the next two to three years so that in pretty much all our markets, we can have people covered by at least 3G technology um, at the 90% level. Um, and we believe that that will, um, even the, the countries that have the most challenged environments uh, should be able to get to that level of uh, coverage so that we can ultimately get to the universal coverage, you know, well before the, the, um, the, the UN goals of 2030. So we want to be able to accelerate that and we will have to work um, not only in kind of traditional modes, but also we'll need to think about, um, you know, working with satellite companies and uh, alternative technologies to, to be able to reach that last mile where people would uh, otherwise not have access. So we believe quite fundamentally that the, the, the need for uh, universal coverage um, is fast becoming a human right. Um, it is provided largely by the private sector, but policy frameworks and incentives to continue the investment uh, into providing more access, you know, we will need these to be provided also by governments and stakeholders more broadly. We fundamentally believe that um, we need to maintain the internet freedoms. So we do believe in an open internet. We want information to flow and we want the internet to remain safe. Um, those three things for us are pretty sacrosanct. The so-called internet freedoms need to be maintained. And we also do want to call out um, you know, the ITU and uh, um, you know, structures more broadly uh, to support the operators as they operate in environments where these internet, uh, internet freedoms may get challenged from time to time by governments. We've ex um, experienced that in several of our markets. And we're not in a position as an operator, um, you know, to, you know, to operate outside of license conditions, as well as outside of the legal and regulatory frameworks of countries. But the need to protect internet freedoms to enable commerce, uh, to, to enable people to continue being educated, access to health, um, and, and so forth, we believe that these things are very, very important for the socioeconomic development um, of markets more generally. But I speak, you know, with the hat of Africa in particular so that we can see the socioeconomic progress um, um, fully realized uh, in the potential that Africa has uh, in particular. So with those comments, I just want to wish all of you well and uh, wish that you have a very successful conference and for the IGF uh, continued success going into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your interesting remarks. And I'll have a great pleasure uh, in inviting to the stage uh, Ms. Kosi Wavi, Anna Akpau Kamasa, who is with us in Katowice. Welcome to the stage. And the floor is yours, of course. Thank you, moderator. Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure for me to be here. My name is Kosiwavi Anna Akbao Kamasan. Um, I am a student at the University of Lomé in Togo. I represent the IGF youth and my community. My subject is the perspective of young, of young people and their position in internet governance sphere. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and at the meantime, there, is, there are millions of youth like me who does not have this opportunity. I would like in the future the program will extend. What I learned from the pandemic, the internet becomes a human right and social issue. Do the economic lack of education and poverty. I would like to see the governments and the UN 
collaborate as mentioned on the SD, on the SG day 17. It will be a duty for me as the IDF youth representative to, to spread program and benefits of the program to a youth people. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Miriam Kühne, chair of the RIPE community, would like to say a few words to all the participants of the IGF 2021 in Katowice. Miriam, do you hear us? Hello, good morning. Hello, Miriam. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Everyone ah, can hear you. Perfect, thank okay. you. It's your time Thank now. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks for the introduction. Dear Excellencies, colleagues and friends there in Katowice, yeah, my name is Miriam Kühne and I'm the chair of the RIPE community. I'm speaking here today on behalf of the um, Internet Technical Community. RIPE stands for Réseau IP European, which is the technical coordination group of network operators in Europe and beyond. Thank you very much for inviting me here to speak and during the opening session of IGF 2021. And I especially want to commend the organizers in Poland for all their efforts to make this event a success despite all the difficult and, and unpredictable circumstances leading up to the event. And I also want to recognize the importance of our collective efforts to innovate and to come together in these online and hybrid events using the technology made available by the internet. And this also made internet governance more inclusive than ever, I believe. Our society's response to COVID-19 has illustrated just how central the internet is to our lives today. It's the internet that's kept us connected during this pandemic. And it's amazing that despite the additional load, the internet has for the most part kept running undisturbed. And this was possible to a large extent thanks to the collaboration and coordination of the technical community and especially those who operate and maintain the internet's underlying infrastructure. I was really impressed to see how operators helped each other, especially in the beginning of the pandemic, when many of us had to be in quarantine or in lockdown and couldn't go to work or to the data centers. And network operators have shared contact information and, and asked if they can help each other. Um, you know, while going to a data center, maybe they could help um, another operator while they were there. And, and don't forget, many of these operators are actually competitors. But, but they do know that the internet would not work without um, such collaboration. And then that they, and ultimately all of us, um, benefit from it. Sharing knowledge and information, learning from each other and helping each other out is an integral part of the technical community and is one of the reasons the internet exists in the first place. The RIPE community, for instance, is over 30 years old. And even though um, it's mostly deals with the technical aspects of the internet, um, it's pretty diverse and it's open to anybody. You could say it's multi-stakeholder avant la lettre. Of course, we all understand that the success of the internet and its importance to our daily lives brings with it new responsibilities. Not only do we need to build out and maintain the internet's technical infrastructure, we must also ensure that as we extend access to more people in our societies, we also protect users online and ensure their security and privacy. Public policy has an important role to play in addressing these concerns and public policymakers in legislature and regulatory authorities around the world are urgently looking to develop and deploy policy solutions. And if anything, this sense of urgency has only increased in the last two years. But well-meaning policies, like any other powerful tool, can have unintended consequences, which could increase risks elsewhere or impact the operation of the internet's underlying technical infrastructure that I've just described to you. And this is why the IGF continues to be such an important venue, bringing together people with different expertise in an open dialogue. The internet is so broad and diverse that none of us can understand every aspect of its operations. We need to learn from each other 
examine what works, what doesn't work. We need to understand each other's concerns and value each, value each other's expertise. And just like the network operators in the RIPE community coordinate to ensure that we can all connect, we need to foster collaboration and cooperation on all levels and between all stakeholders. And as the IGF itself evolves to meet the needs of a changing internet governance space, we need to keep that open, inclusive, transparent and multi-stakeholder approach that has made the IGF such a unique example of how to manage governance at a global scale. The value and benefits we all get from the internet are deeply rooted in its being an open, single, stable network of networks. It's global in nature and accessible to all. And we need to work together to ensure that it stays that way. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish us all a productive and insightful discussion in the days ahead. Miriam Kühne, Chair of the RIPE community, thank you very much for your inspiring comments. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a pleasure now inviting to the stage Republic of Poland Plenipotentiary for UN IGF 2021, Mr. Krzysztof Schubert. Welcome to the stage, the floor is yours. Excelencjo, Panie Premierze, Państwo Ministrowie, Szanowni Goście, jest mi niezmiernie miło gościć Państwa osobiście w Katowicach, w mieście, które się bardzo zmienia, przechodzi transformację i staje się miastem nowoczesnym, nastawionym na innowacyjność. Mam przyjemność podsumować pierwszy dzień i powiedzieć kilka słów, co jeszcze przed nami. Pierwszy dzień, jak Państwo widzieliście, bardzo pełny, szereg debat, szereg spotkań, bardzo ciekawe, zróżnicowane środowisko, które dyskutuje o najważniejszych tematach i wyzwaniach świata cyfrowego. Mamy rzeczywiście wielostronne środowisko, w którym rozmawiamy, czyli to, na czym zależało ONZ-owi, multi-stakeholder approach, Mamy rzeczywiście to teraz w Katowicach. Patrząc po rejestracjach, 8 tysięcy osób, jak pan Ludzimin wspomniał, 4,5 tysiąca osób zarejestrowanych on-site, czyli do obecności tutaj z nami fizycznej, z wielu kontynentów, kilkudziesięciu państw. To jest naprawdę co, to, na czym nam zależało, udało się to doprowadzić. Pomimo wielu niedogodności, poprzedni rok całkowicie zdalny, czyli 15. edycja Szczytu Cyfrowego ONZ zupełnie zdalna, natomiast z ogromnym komponentem polskim Polacy brali udział, aktywny udział w 50 panelach, w 50 wydarzeniach i to zostało zauważone. W tym roku mamy przed nami 300 wydarzeń, pierwszy dzień zakończony. W kilku słowach, co tego dnia się wydarzyło tak naprawdę, o czym rozmawialiśmy, Cztery duże obszary dyskusji. Pierwsza infrastruktura, czyli dostęp do sieci, dostęp do nowoczesnej infrastruktury, sieci 5G, 6G, kolejne prędkości, ale też i dostęp w ogóle do internetu, o czym też tutaj mówiliśmy. Drugi obszar, bardzo szeroko komentowany w panelach, to usługi, usługi świata cyfrowego, zarówno usługi świadczone przez administrację, jak i usługi świadczone przez biznes, Ostatnie dwa lata pandemii pokazały, jak ten świat cyfrowy jest ważny. Bez tego nie byłoby interakcji z administracją, nie moglibyśmy załatwiać spraw biznesowych, nie moglibyśmy się uczyć. Także wiele obszarów, które udało się w tym czasie nam przygotować. Przeszliśmy pewnie wszyscy no bardzo przyspieszony kurs nauki wszystkich możliwych aplikacji do pracy zdalnej. Także naprawdę czas wykorzystany i wiele z tych elementów z nami zostanie. Trzeci duży obszar, o którym rozmawialiśmy, to kompetencje szeroko rozumiane świata cyfrowego. Im bardziej jesteśmy w tym świecie cyfrowym, tym jesteśmy bardziej narażeni na wiele też niebezpiecznych sytuacji, o których wszyscy tutaj mówili nasi przedmówcy. Jest to obszar bardzo ważny do zaadresowania i to też się oczywiście dzieje. Czwarty duży obszar, szeroko rozumiane cyberbezpieczeństwo, zarówno z perspektywy firm, obywateli, administracji, także obszar bardzo, bardzo szeroki. 
Dwa duże jeszcze bloki, które pojawiły się w spotkaniach, to jest potrzeba współpracy międzynarodowej, szczególnie właśnie tej wielostronnej, czyli gdzie biznes, administracja, świat nauki, organizacje pozarządowe, organizacje technologiczne na równych prawach ze sobą dyskutują, wypracowują konkluzje, wypracowują standardy. Również współpraca w obszarze cyfrowym pomiędzy państwami w różnych formatach. Mieliśmy tutaj możliwość spotkać wielu ministrów z wielu państw świata, rozmawiać o możliwych możliwościach współpracy zarówno w formatach tutaj naszych europejskich, jak V4, Trójmorze, Unia Europejska, szersza perspektywa, także współpraca międzynarodowa, ogromnie ważny komponent. I to, co ciekawe, co też nowe, co pojawiło się podczas pierwszego dnia, też wiele rozmów o inwestycjach, czyli jak tak naprawdę ten rozwój cyfrowy wspierać, bo bez funduszy, bez inwestycji nie będzie to możliwe. Zarówno chodzi o małe firmy, o startupy, o wsparcie pomysłów, o rozwijanie tych firm, także to jest też to, co nowego pojawiło się na IGF-ie. Bardzo ważny komponent, który został też wspomniany, nowy, zaproponowany przez Polskę w tym roku, czyli Szczyt Młodych, czyli spotkanie kadry senioralnej z młodzieżą, z ludźmi, którzy dopiero wchodzą na ten rynek, którzy w najbliższym czasie przejmą po nas zarządzanie światem cyfrowym, programowanie tego świata. O dziwo spotkało się to z bardzo dużym zainteresowaniem. Nie byliśmy do końca pewni, jak to zostanie przyjęte. Pełna sala audytorium tutaj w Międzynarodowym Centrum Konferencyjnym. Bardzo dużo ciekawych rozmów i po, i w trakcie tego wydarzenia. Także to jest to, co było pierwszego dnia. Wieczór podsumowaliśmy, mam nadzieję, przepięknym koncertem w Nosprze. Wielu, wiele wy, wy, wydań artystów, wiele bardzo ciekawych nowych interpretacji. Także naprawdę bardzo miło spędzony czas, a przed nami jeszcze cztery dni. Czyli mamy jeszcze spotkania high level, wiele sesji, kilkadziesiąt najróżniejszych jeszcze wydarzeń bardzo, bardzo ważnych przed nami. Ja jednocześnie chciałbym bardzo serdecznie podziękować ONZ-owi za przyznanie nam prawa do organizacji 16. edycji Szczytu Cyfrowego ONZ Internet Governance Forum, Forum Zarządzania Internetem. Chociaż tak naprawdę od wielu lat zmienia się perspektywa na znacznie bardziej strategiczną. Czyli nie rozmawiamy już tylko o zarządzaniu internetem, ale o wszystkim, co na tym internecie tak naprawdę działa. Chodzi i o regulacje, i o zmiany, o nowe technologie, o przyszłe technologie, wspomniane technologie kwantowe, technologie HPC, High Performance Computing. To jest to też, o czym żeśmy rozmawiali w ciągu pierwszego dnia i z pewnością będziemy to kontynuowali podczas spotkań w kolejnych dniach, do czego bardzo serdecznie Państwa zapraszam, jednocześnie prosząc o komentowanie i aktywny udział we wszystkich wydarzeniach, wykorzystując hashtag IGF 2021. Dziękuję Państwu bardzo za obecność. Thank you very much, Krzysztof Schubert. Thank you very much for making a short summary of the first day of IGF 2021. And in this way, ladies and gentlemen, the official part of the opening ceremony is nearing its end, but we still have for you a cultural show. In a moment, a great artist will perform especially for you, their guests, their participants of the IGF 2021 in Katowice. He's a classical pianist, composer, conductor, as well as entrepreneur and public speaker. He started playing piano at the age of 14, but a few months later he won his first piano competition. At the age of 18 he played at the Théâtre de Champs-Élysées in Paris. His breakthrough came 2010 at the most important piano competition in the world, Chopin Piano Competition in Warsaw, where he won more prizes than anyone else that year. He has performed in the most prestigious halls in Europe, Asia, and both Americas. Recently, together with his wife, they founded Apasio and Apasimo, a music and art education startup used by universities. He appears also as a speaker representing the music world. He has spoken and participated in the discussion at the World Economic Forum in Davos and also in San Diego during the world's largest educational conference and, of course, a lot of other places. Passion is a key word in his life. Today, he is with us in Katowice and played three pieces by famous Polish composers. Wojciech Kilar, theme of the film Trendowata Precz Moich Oczu, Ignacy Jan Paderewski, Menuje Dżidur, Opus 14, number one, and Frédéric Chopin, 
Polonaise Asdor, Opus 53. Additionally, he will speak about the importance of quality music and the music education for all of us in a world full of technology and artificial intelligence. Please give a big applause to Ingolf Wunder. Ingolf Wunder.
you so much. Thank you very much. It's my huge pleasure to be here today in Poland at the IGF and to talk to such a great international crowd of people who all deeply care about digital transformation. Thank you so much for having me. Today I would like to talk to you about the importance of music, quality music and music education in a world full of AI. We are surrounded by technology and we definitely live in a world of overstimulation. The smartphone became our best companion and with the current crazy times we live through, we get even more connected to computers. I'm a musician, as you heard, but my wife and I, we also have an internet startup. I love technology. And on that journey so far, we got to know the up and down sides of technology and got to know how they can influence our human evolution. However, our tech consumption habits might change in the future. It's quite safe to assume that we go into a world where most segments of our lives will be controlled to some degree by an AI. And through these AI systems, we'll be continuously being bombarded uh, by audio video content 24 seven and in record speeds. And it's very important to know that all these streams of content that come into our brain are immediately evaluated with the two minds within us. We have the conscious mind and we have the subconscious mind. The conscious one runs on a computer equivalent speed of about 40 to 100 bits per second, which is quite decent already. But our subconscious mind runs on a mind blowing 40 to 100 million bits per second. So while your conscious brain can only focus on a few things at the same time, your subconscious mind takes in everything. So in fact, everything you have ever experienced, thought or listened to stays to some degree in your brain. And in those streams of content, there's almost always also some music present. Music and sounds is something we simply cannot get away from. Even if you cover your ears, you still hear the sounds. But before we go deeper into the relationship of music and tech, it's important to answer this basic question. Why is music and sounds, why is that so important for us humans and for our bodies? Why is it relevant? Well, firstly, we process sounds the quickest. Therefore, they shoot a pistol at the start of a 100 meter race and they don't flash you in the face with a light. Secondly, music seems to have a very direct influence on our human nervous systems. Music makes us sad, music makes us happy, music makes us think and music makes us focus. Music seems to have all these direct influences on our body. But why does music do this? Well, this is because of frequency. Music is obviously frequency, but if you zoom in on a quantum level, all of the trillions of our, of our cells are frequency too. They're waves. And if you scientifically analyze that, you see that all the information we receive has a direct biological impact on our bodies. The science around this is called epigenetics. And it tells us that what some call your personal reality, so what you thought, what you eat, what you think, <laughs> this is thought, and of course what you, what you listen to, has a direct influence on how our DNA blueprint is being used in order to make proteins. And these proteins make up the cells, and the cells in the group are what we call us. And here's the thing. Billions of cells die every day and are replaced by newly created ones. And these new ones have been directly altered by your personal reality. And when I first learned about this, it, it blew my mind, almost literally. So it means that it's scientifically proven that what you listen to changes you biologically. 
And as a musician who became conscious of these things, I can tell you firsthand that the influence of music on our bodies and brains is absolutely profound. And what I can also tell you is that the more quality music has, the more good change it's doing within us. I'll come to this in a bit, but quality in music means it gives our body more information, more diversification, more emotional details, more shades, and so on. And all of this happens to all of us every day, no matter if you're, if you're aware of it, or no matter if you're a musician or not. So I'm asking you, if you know what you know now, that it's scientifically proven that music changes our bodies and that quality music does it better, why would you feed yourself with low quality music exactly? Low quality music means that it has less diversification, less meaning, less details and shades. In fact, low quality music can be directly compared to junk food. And unless you're a seven-year-old kid, you wouldn't want to eat junk food every day, would you? But in order to know what we should eat or listen to in this example, it's very important to know what quality in music actually is. And this is a very hard one, because even specialists got used to saying, yeah, there are so many, you know, so many details, most of it is subjective, they say. You like this, I like that. Let's agree to disagree and let the market decide about quality. Well, this is obviously a wrong strategy, but there is indeed something subjective on top of it. And this is beautiful because two people listening to the same piece of music will hear every time something slightly different every time they listen to it. This is wonderful. But underneath there is a more objective and more important layer which can be scientifically analyzed, measured and passed on by human traditions. So if you take these two layers, subjective and objective, put them together, then you have roughly the overall quality of a piece of music. Unfortunately, in the second half of the 20th century, we let this overall quality of music go down quite rapidly. And unfortunately, it left a world where we have billions of people being surrounded day in and day out by low quality music. And by the way, low quality is not genre specific. There's great and bad pop music, as well as great and bad classical music. And with this overall downfall of quality, we unfortunately also influenced the conscious and subconscious music understanding and sensitivity of billions of people today. And this is something we urgently need to fix. In my opinion, making sure we have high quality music for billions of people is right up there in terms of importance with all the other SDGs. In fact, it falls directly into SDG number three, good health and well-being, and SDG number four, quality education. So we know now that music influences our body and that quality music does it better. But why is it relevant in a world full of tech? Well, as most of you know, we are at crossroads currently, and the technology that leads us into the future while in-depth only understood by very few people, is being used by billions of people. And it has, it or it has us already halfway through, through in the singularity, and, or at least in a world where it's very hard to distinguish human and machine. A few examples. Imagine AI composing your personal music without you ever learning anything about composition. Imagine an AI doing your law work without you being a lawyer. Or imagine an AI system healing you without you visiting a doctor. Or the obvious one, imagine a world where you can just Google something by thinking. As most of you know, we are almost already in that world and it will take only a few steps until we are completely in. Some of us will go there voluntary, some of us involuntary. And for music, this means we have to ask ourselves questions like, what is quality? I touched upon that. Who will be the judge of quality? An AI? My mood? My informed or uninformed opinion? And how are we giving billions of people the needed sensitivity back to become consciously aware of these quality differences? You know, the ones that our bodies take in anyway, whether you know or not. In my opinion, 
it's very important to think about these questions and to dream up solutions around them. Because what has happened in the past was actually quite the opposite. We made sure that humans become less sensitive, that we create art with less meaningful differences, with less shades, with ne less musicality, less naturalness. In other words, we made sure that we humans become a bit less human and a bit more machine. At the same time, computers, AI and technology rapidly increase its, its capabilities. And at this low quality music level, machines almost don't need us anymore. They are just scaling by themselves very fast. So if you have this human curve going down, making us a bit less human, a bit more machine, and you have the technology curve going up rapidly, you clearly see the problem we are facing. But don't get me wrong, technology is a huge opportunity. And I believe it can be used to make good change and to propel this good thing and help us on our path. In fact, I believe we must get that right because this human fine tuning and musical quality is a layer that isn't used much or not at all in that transformation. And it leaves a world where basically only sellability and scalability decides about quality of things. And I wouldn't want my kid to grow up in a world where junk food would get the label of best quality food ever. What we should be focusing on is making us more sensitive, making us more humane in a way, and creating art and music with more subtle differences, naturalness, musicality, and teach technology to help us on that path. It's a hand-in-hand -hand process. In music, as in many other subjects, the most important questions of this century will be around ethics, quality, and value. Fortunately, there are startups like Pauline Wunders and mine that try to tackle in music exactly these things. And as you know, technology is getting so much better so quickly that frankly speaking, there isn't an awful lot of time left for us humans to become better at being human. I'm very optimistic though, and especially as a musician, because I believe for all of us, this quality music factor can play a key role in that transformation. But I'm also very optimistic for the youth, because music education and quality music gives you all these neuronal connections, this value understanding and sensibility that makes kids and adults more sensitive to the world around them. In addition, music education makes kids almost every better at everything they do, from finance, engineering, maths to coding. Therefore, in my opinion, it's an absolute must that music gets again the same importance in normal schools as other main subjects. It's a globally added value. And it's high time that we take STEM, science, technology, engineering and math, and make STEAM out of it, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So if you're a curious young person or an adult with kids, I invite you dearly to open your mind and become conscious of this musical awareness. I promise you it's going to be the best present you will ever do to yourself or to your kids. Far, far in the future, when humans or whatever creatures will look back at our times and will ask questions like, did they find the human place in a world full of AI? Or were they flushed away by the avalanche of data because we were unable to collaborate and use tech the right way? It cannot be repeated often enough. It's amongst the most important things to deal with quality, value, and ethics questions in supposedly subjective fields. And also try to improve as humans and not only the machines. I believe we can leverage the power of quality music to make us smarter, more sensitive, more empathetic, happier, and healthier. And at the end of the day, isn't that all we want? Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. Katowice, Poland, it was a huge pleasure.
thank you very much. What a performance and what a speech. Uh, Ingolf Wunder, thank you for being with us in Katowice. Ladies and gentlemen, the opening ceremony of the annual Internet Forum, Governments Forum, is nearing its end. Uh, the IGF 2021 in Katowice has started. I uh, wish you a very, very successful and fruitful debate. And remember that uh, this is an open debate about the future of the Internet. Everyone can influence. Feel free to comment, to share your opinion. Thank you all dear guests and participants here in Katowice in the International Congress Center and all those who are with us online. Thank you for your attention, for being with us and have a great time, those who are in Katowice, in Poland. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>